Previously at the Bluestone Villa. The last time our house is going to look like this. I'm going to take you back in time to Thursday the 11th of March now, which was the day that we had the scaffolding put up. As you'll be able to see, the render out the front here is really, really catty. And there are also a number of cracks. That means the render has blown from the wall and is allowing rainwater to get underneath the render. Hence the work we're undertaking. The job has begun. Well, 140 year old render is currently coming off of the front of our house. <laughs> So he's covered that first top two thirds with the scratch coat. Hi guys, welcome to the Bluestone Villa. My name's Louisa and welcome to episode three of our external renovation process. If you've not caught up with our other episodes, essentially we are working on the exterior of our house. We live in a semi-detached Victorian townhouse. It is a rendered Victorian house. It has always been rendered, so it was built that way. And we are at the moment in the process of re-rendering our house and repainting all of the outside of the house as well. It's the biggest um, job we've done here. It's definitely the most expensive job. And if you have not caught up our previous episodes, I will actually link them down below, but you will have also seen some clips already um, today that just share kind of where we're up to at this present point in time. Now, spoiler alert, because I'm actually kind of filming this, well, I'm coming to you from the future, but also still in the past. Essentially, this next stage of the rendering process, I did do some filming of, I did take pictures of, but there is just no cohesive narrative. If I'm fully transparent, like literally, if I put this footage here, you wouldn't have, you'd be like, huh? <laughs> um, so I thought it was better if I make this a bit more of a chatty video. I'm gonna talk through some of those next steps that we took, some of the things that we discovered in this process, and I'll obviously intercept that with other footage. As I said, everything that I've done in this particular period of the overall external renovation was just, it, it was just blah. It was just kind of random videos or random pictures and it didn't really tell a story of any kind. And I did kind of touch on my last video in the comments box below that I would kind of share where I've been because I've also been a bit like not around, I guess, on YouTube as much the last couple of months. Um, if you're on our Instagram, um, then you will know this already. But essentially I started a new job, which yay, that's exciting and a really positive thing for me. So I've just been kind of overwhelmed with, I guess, learning a new job. The job itself is not wildly different, but obviously the company is. Um, but then on a slightly less positive note, my mum's had some health issues over the last, well, not just the last few months, but they've kind of escalated in the last few months. My mum was due a heart operation. Um, she has been for a number of years. It's actually safer with what she has to operate when it's in a more severe stage. That severe stage actually was pre-COVID. Um, so she really should have had this heart operation last year, um, but obviously everything with COVID delayed this. And then she finally got her date through, which was due for kind of mid-May, which was really, really exciting. She found out towards the end of April. And then literally two days later, she fell over and broke the well, her upper right arm in three pieces is actually one of the rarer breaks to have and it's one of the more painful as well. She could barely move with it. Um, and it obviously, it obviously created a lot of uh, complications and had huge implications on this heart operation. She has come out of the heart operation, which is brilliant. Um, she's now back at home and she's recovering. But as you can imagine, it's been a bit of a it's been a it's been a bit of a moment if I'm honest so that's kind of I've just not really been in the right headspace um for some of this external project which I'm a bit annoyed with myself about I guess because I was really looking forward to sharing so much of this and obviously I still can and I still have other videos to share with you and I'm obviously still sharing today but I guess it's just not quite in the format I had first anticipated but 
nothing. There's nothing I can do about that. So I'm just going to stop worrying about that for any reason. So we left off where we had had the render taken off of the top two thirds of the front of our house and a scratch coat put on. I kind of explained the scratch coat last time as kind of a bit like keying woodwork. So you key woodwork, you sand it, um, not necessarily to take off all the paint, but just enough so that more paint sticks to it. And that's very much like what I anticipate and think like the scratch coat is like. So um, I think the scratch coat is essentially that first layer of render and it's what the rest of the render is meant to cling to as well. So we just had one last section of render to remove from our house. Um, and that was the bottom third of our house around our bottom bay window. Now, you may recall if you did see the last video that there was a section of our bay window, essentially above the middle bay window that was sagging and had a crack through it. So we were really nervous to reveal that because what could be the problem? Could it be a lintel problem? Could it be something more serious? Um, and so it was one of those things that it was like, really wanted to know what was underneath there and also really didn't want to know what was underneath there so it was really worrying but the guy that we had working on it um did tell us and i think i shared this last time as well that it could possibly just be the render is sagging and whoo hallelujah that is exactly what that was it was just that the render was sagging so it came off we were actually super surprised and i touched on this slightly last time as well that the brickwork was perfect there was just nothing wrong i think when you take render off of brickwork particularly of old houses there is this kind of concern and fear that you're going to find something lurking beneath that you're not going to want to see now i think quite often people say that because maybe their house has been rendered possibly to hide some of those imperfections. Our house, this is what this house would have always looked like. So um, it wasn't to hide anything. It was just the way they were built. It was the style. But nonetheless, it's 140 years old odd and you kind of have to wonder like, is there, is there something underneath that we're going to be afraid of? And also there's a cost implication to that as well, right? Like, we had these quotes knowing full well that going into this project, those costs could change because something could crop up. And I think that was something that I was really wary of and really nervous of, um, particularly going into the project because I got my new job um, really quickly, actually. It was a super quick turnaround and I was really chuffed about that. But obviously when we had given the go ahead for this project, I still, well I had been made redundant and I was looking for a new job and it was one of those things of like how long is a piece of string I don't know how long I'm going to be looking for in the middle of a global pandemic so I was kind of nervous about us spending a very large pot of money that James had saved to do specifically to do this work when perhaps we were going to have no money still for a really long time. Um, and then if there were other issues on top, wow, I just, yeah, I, it really made me so, so nervous. So the thought of then finding something as well underneath there was really, really worrying. Thankfully, that was not the case at all. As I said, the brickwork was, looks just amazing. Um, there was nothing wrong with anything and it was just a straight take it off, put it back on again. Um, some of the other weird or cool things that we saw, it, we kind of touched on it a little bit in the last video, but James was kind of calling down to me from the scaffolding and I didn't caption it. So I'm pretty sure unless you've got like super duper hearing or you'd had headphones in and you could really hear what he was saying. Um, you kind of wouldn't know perhaps um, this from the last video, but James mentioned that there were a couple of loose bricks um, and it was, I was thinking like, well, that doesn't sound good, but actually it was totally fine. There was only the odd one and they were really far away from each other. It wasn't like all in one section or anything like that. And we actually realized that they all sat either side of the windows going down in like an incremental path pattern and I think there was either three or four on each side um going down the house and we realized that what it was was because you could kind of clean take them out and then put them back in again 
it's where probably the original Victorian scaffolding was plugged into the house for when it was originally built, which is kind of cool to think about how this house was built and the people that were building it and the process of that. I am a super house history geek. Like I love, love the history of a home and the people that lived in it and built it and the time and the people that lived on the street. Like I just eat that stuff up and I am obsessed with find my past obsessed with it um, and I've done a huge amount of house history on this house and I think that's something I'm probably going to share at some point um, in the next few months because I just find it fascinating I'm not even sure I care if you don't find it fascinating because I just want to share it because I just feel like it's really exciting so that was a really cool discovery so next up the scratch coat went on the bottom third of the house as well and finally that was kind of completely scratch coated up and then it was time for the proper layer of render now we had this done in a way that is totally different to what our house looked like first of all um, and is different from the other houses on our street, but it is actually taking the house back to what it would have looked like um, back when it was built. So I didn't actually know this about these types of Victorian houses, but I think most, if not all of them, would have originally have had this kind of, we called them Victorian pencil lines, but I'm actually not sure what the official name is. It's kind of like Victorian block work. I'm, I'm not sure. If you know the official name, please drop it in the comments below. But essentially it's like these drawing on, the drawing on of like really large bricks. Um, and I have had absolutely no idea that that was a thing. Um, but actually, if you look at the side and the back of our house, particularly up towards the top of the house, um, because we haven't had that re-rendered, you can see where the original like block work, pencil lines, whatever you wanna call it, was. So our house definitely had that originally. And actually, now that I know that, I notice it so much more when I'm walking around different streets um, in the town and see like different houses and you're like, Oh yeah, like they had it too. And what it is, is I guess just over the years with the weather, it just weathers and wears down. And so you lose that kind of, that line definition. And then I guess over the years you patch it. So some of it's lost then, and then you might skim it and that's lost, lost then. Maybe if you've got multiple layers of paint over time, you lose it then. And so looking at our house and everyone else's, it just looks like we have like a smooth, flat render but that's totally not the case they all would have had this kind of victorian block work pencil lines so yeah i had no idea that this was a thing but james really passionately wanted this put back on the house and so it was really his desire to have this done and i thought it was a great idea you know me i really like restoring or retaining kind of original victorian features so that was a no-brainer for me that we go ahead and do that so we actually had those put in Nigel did them all by hand so it was really amazing obviously you have to be really quite um, particular with it quite specific um, it was obviously took a much longer process than if he just whacked the render on and it was done um, so it was a really amazing process to see it come to life and it just looked really really smart it was quite I would say it felt quite punchy I guess when it was first done because where obviously we've just got the render on it was a much darker color than obviously what our house was before so it was just a lot more obvious um but spoiler alert now that it has been painted it like blends in a lot nicer um and it just looks really smart it looked really smart even before the paint but it just was one of those things that excuse my fridge it was just one of those things that I was like, oh, it is like, we do look quite different now from everybody else's house. I hope we don't stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> but yeah, it looks beautiful. And I was really, really happy with the process. And Nigel actually also shared with us as part of that, that back in the Victorian times, I think he said they either would have had like some kind of wire or some kind of string. And one person would have stood at one side and one person would have stood at the other side and they would have just 
pinged it back into the render and then brought it out quickly again and that's how they would have done the lines so it's just really mad to think that that is kind of the process and it would have required more than one person and what have you and there's all not poor old Nigel just up there doing it by himself. So Nigel had originally quoted us that the job could take three to five weeks. So that included everything from removing the render, re-rendering, putting the uh, block work back in, etc. And I guess the disparity in times would be if weather was bad, or I guess if he did find something that we needed to fix, which obviously weather was not too bad through the process and we didn't find anything that we had to resolve. So that was awesome and i think he was probably here for like a month overall but that was because there were a few days where he there was one or two days where he couldn't come because of weather and then one or two days where i guess he was waiting for certain things to dry a certain way and so he would go off and do another job and then come back a couple of days later so yeah we, i think he was here for about a month overall so we started the process in mid-march and by kind of mid-april he was done in terms of anything else that he did, he did a few little patching bits, but most of that was left then for our next guy who was obviously to come to really finish the process and paint, um, which kind of I'll move on to probably shortly. And then also there are additional videos for that as well. But yeah, so he did a few things. And one of the things he also did was around our, I never really know what they're called, but they're the more, more of that kind of detailing piece around the side of our house. So we had these like blocks. Um, so he just um, filled some of those because some of those were really rough and like chipped out and just, yeah, not very smart at all. So he filled some of those and smoothed some of those. So it just looked super like clean lines, really, really beautiful. And yeah, that finished up in mid-April.